Ma Mubarak, everyone. Inshallah, I'll get started. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah, wa nahmaduhu, wa nasta'inuhu, wa nastaghfiruhu, wa na'uzu billah min shuduri anfusina, wa min sayyati amalina. Man yahdihillahu falamudillala, wa man yudlil falahadiyala. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu, wa ahdahu la sharika la, anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanatuku allaha, haqqa tukatihi, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والألهام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All thanks and praise is due to Allah we seek his help and forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. And whoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and his messenger. Oh, you have believed, fear Allah as he should be feared. And do not die except as Muslims in submission to him. Oh, you have believed. Fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. He will amend for you your deeds, forgive you your sins, and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has certainly attained a great attainment. Amabad. Um, my dear brothers and sisters, today we are going to continue on this journey that we started uh, some time ago. You know, we're going to continue to learn about the 99 names of Allah. And today uh, I want to talk about the next three names, which is Al Mujib, Al Wasti, and Al Hakim. As I was thinking about this khutbah this week, you know, I started asking myself, um, why do we even spend time learning about these attributes? Like, what is the purpose? Why do we want to give us, uh, give ourselves all this work in order to learn this? Um, and, and I kept coming back to the point that, you know, we do this because we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the learning part of this is always going to be directed, regardless of what we learn. You know, we learn because we want to increase ourselves in knowledge. And that increase in knowledge leads us to improve ourselves, not just in our personal lives, but also, you know, in any other community interaction that we might have, or just any other engagement we might have. And this gathering of knowledge, this directed effort specifically towards learning the 99 names of Allah is meant to bring our hearts closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, this um, goal of ours should be, we want to increase our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And learning about the 99 names of Allah is a way for us to increase that love in our hearts and also share that love with uh, one another as a reminder. So how much do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of the miracles that Allah has given us? Or do we love Allah for who he is? Now, we don't know Allah's personality as best as Allah does. Um, however, we can try, we can strive, we can learn, we have intellect, we can, you know, spend that time and effort and learn. And if we think about our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the spectrum, uh, do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the miracles? So if you put that on one end of the spectrum, or do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for who he is on the other end of the spectrum? The reason I put that in that scale is because the only way we know where we are is if there's a way for us to measure that. So if we look at loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the miracles or because of the blessings that we might have enjoyed through our lifetime, then that feels very transactional. Then if you take all those away, then where does your love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stand? And that's on the other end of the spectrum. Do you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of who Allah is? Because then that means regardless of your situation, your personal situation or the situation that might be going on around you, that continuity in behavior will continue to, to follow you and carry with you wherever you go. Uh, you know, another way of thinking about this is uh, that we love one another as community members for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, our love for our parents, our children, and our spouses might be a little more than that. So to develop that love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much deeper and richer than the love we have for people close to or around us. Um, so while we discuss the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I, I would like for you to think of each attribute as a knowledge tree. The tree grows in strength over time. With each passing year, the tree only grows, not only grows up, but it also grows out, getting wider. And each branch that sprouts from that tree is going to either offer enough strength for the fruits and flowers that will grow on it, 
or it's not going to enough, uh, not going to provide enough support for those fruits and those uh, flowers that might be growing on it. And as this tree grows and those branches offer a uh, certain strength, that analogy, or sorry, that, that tree will then shed some of these branches if it needs more energy going into a specific branch. And that's kind of like, um, you know, how we should see our personal growth, our personal journey uh, in learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, each one of these branches could be thought of as habits. You know, we have certain times in the day that we allocate to certain activities, or there's certain things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives. And that, that activity may or may not benefit us so just introspecting on that is um, the point I want to drive here with this example of this tree is just to say, what are those habits that we can shed that will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or maybe even bring us closer to spending more time and energy in contemplating, you know, what it means to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as we start realizing our own limitations, we begin to appreciate the being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We begin to appreciate the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, all the all the the creations around us, we begin to appreciate that even more, and we begin to realize that all of these miracles from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala are an expression of His being, and only Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the Great and the Glorious, knows Himself better than we can ever imagine. And as we learn more about Allah, we begin to realize for us to grow stronger in the love for Allah, we need to shed some habits. We need to direct our energies towards building that core knowledge even stronger. And that's, a, that's an effort in time. And, and as I was, you know, as I go through this journey with you, I find that there's certain things that I need to do better, I need to do differently, and how much work I need to put into myself. And inshallah, hopefully you are also benefiting from that and realizing how much work um, you need to put into yourself in order to build that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whose love and bounties are infinite, um, in, in comparison to our own. And, you know, there's a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari as narrated by Umar bin al-Khattab. I heard Allah's messenger saying the reward of deeds depends on the intentions and every person will get the reward according to what he has intended. So whoever emigrated for worldly benefits or for a woman to marry, his emigration was for what he emigrated for. And this hadith is a reminder, at least for me and hopefully for you as well, that our efforts should be meaningful. Our efforts should work towards a goal. And if our goal is to grow for grow our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then our actions should lead us to that goal. And with each name we talk about and contemplate about, there are so many directions we can carry the line of thinking into. Uh, for example, uh, when we talked about al karim the generous, we recognize that Allah's generosity is beyond our ability to be generous. And we recognize the value of being generous in our own lives. When we give others, we know that feeling of warm fuzzies that you know, we get in ourselves. And that only improves not just our lives, but also members of our community. So today, let's talk about the next three attributes that um, uh, will hopefully help us get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, build in our heart that muscle uh, in order to be a better Muslim. Um, you know, one of the ways that um, you know, I like to think about learning is that this is a continuous process. So as we, as we continue to remind one another for, you know, about Allah, about the benefits that staying close to Allah brings us, this is a journey that we need to continuously work towards together, inshallah, as a community. Um, there's a, a surah in Surah Dariyat, continue to remind for certainly reminders benefit the believer. So with that, I'd like to start the first attribute today that we're going to talk about is al-mujib, the answer of prayers. Linguistically, the root word for this attribute is ja wa ba. In classical Arabic, the root word has the meaning of to answer, to reply, to respond. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who responds to the requests of those who ask. We call upon Allah when we have a need. And we do this at least five times a day. And this is there's always that one dua, that one dua that we always make after every salah, and we all have at least one of those that we, that we can do. And responding to that dua also implies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening. So, you know, when Allah responds, he's not just responding to what we say in our prayers, he's responding to our entire situation. So how can we as Muslims 
have a share in this attribute because each and one of these each one of these attributes have uh, some connection has to have some connection to us in some way in which we can learn and grow from this and it starts with listening and it's just this listening to everything all around us you know it's listening to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listening to what allah has commanded us to do or forbid us to do and whatever allah has assigned to us to do or summoned us to do so i know that's a little bit of a mouthful but for the most part it's just listening to what allah has has uh, commanded us to do and when we choose to believe in the existence of allah and accept that allah is the master of the day of judgment we are submitting our will and that is our response submission of our will is a response to the realization that allah is the master of the universe and everything that exists in and around us is thanks to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we have a need allah will respond in the best way possible for us when we learn of a need our response should be to act in the best way possible and in accordance with what allah has told us for example when we look for work to support ourselves we should be looking for work that would not only sustain us but work with us work that is halal uh, another example is when we see someone who needs assistance like say a homeless person or a beggar on the street our response should be to help that individual helping those in need is in line with what allah has commanded us and what allah commands we listen to and we obey in verses uh, 9 and 10 of surah duha allah mentions so do not oppress the orphan nor repulse the beggar and when allah mentions beggar it also implies those who need help one does not beg when help is not needed and helping those who are in need is a form of charity because when we help someone in need we're also restoring their dignity and allowing them to continue the way they were before their need came about and there are two sides to this response when help is needed one side of the response is giving aid and the other side of the response is receiving aid and when we receive aid our response should always be one of gratitude i think that's fairly straightforward when we give aid our response should also be one of gratitude in at-tirmidhi uh, it is recorded that abu huraira narrated that the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said quote whoever is not grateful to the people he is not grateful to allah and gratitude is ingrained in us in islam and we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at least 17 times a day when we perform our five daily prayers and recite surah al-fatiha the first chapter in the quran alhamdulillah rabbil alamin the opening verse all praise and thanks be to allah so why should we feel grateful when we give help versus receive help when we receive help we are grateful because our need has been met when we give help we are being grateful for the opportunity to be useful and grow our good actions and this opportunity would not have been available to us if the need did not exist in the first place so the creation of that opportunity is a blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so moving along to the next attribute of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that i'd like to discuss today is al wasi the vast the root word of this attribute is wa sin ain and in classical arabic it means uh, sufficient in size wide spacious and plentiful and this attribute derives from the expansiveness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pick any attribute any attribute of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has and it is vast in quantity you know think infinity here whether we talk about allah's mercy his knowledge his response his charity it all extends beyond our human abilities and is immense and if allah's knowledge were to compare to the oceans and the seas of the world allah's knowledge will have no shores if every drop of water in all the oceans of the sea uh uh oceans and seas of the world were ink for allah's words the ocean would dry up long before allah's words and if we consider the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no end to them when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees something he simply tells it and it is done and we are told this in surah maryam kun fayakun be and it is and if allah is vast in every conceivable way more than what we know what is our share in this attribute coming back to that uh question again with each one of these attributes for us it boils down to knowledge and character our ability to learn more and grow in character is a measure of ourselves but what is that scale what is that scale by which we can measure this it is time and effort the more we spend the time we have in this world on growing our knowledge that benefits us the more we also improve in character and any knowledge that brings us closer to allah is the best of knowledge 
Our character is a representation of how we behave with ourselves and the people around us. It is a representation of how well we obey Allah and follow the path that has been prescribed to us. It is that realization that one day, everything we work for will be left behind except for our deeds. At some point, we should learn that being content is not a matter of having more of everything. It is a matter of having less of everything. And being content in our worldly life means that having that which we need so that we can pursue goals that give our character meaning and purpose. However, there's only so much time we have in this world. The time we have is finite. And the amount of knowledge we can learn and the amount of growth we can realize in our character is limited to this life that we have available to us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than all of that. We can do all of that. We can amass as much wealth, but it's going to stop someday. All of that knowledge, all of that growth is going to stop someday. Um, so that's just a constant reminder for us to say, make the best use of our time because we're not, we don't have infinite of it and, and spend every minute growing. The third attribute I'd like to discuss with you today is al-hakim, the wise. And this goes back again to knowledge. So the root word of attribute is ha, kaf, mim. And in classical Arabic, it has the connotations of to prevent or restrain from wrongdoing, to turn someone back from wrongdoing and knowing the true nature of things to pass judgment. You know, I opened up the dictionary just to, you know, see what the meaning of wise would be. And we learned that the meaning of wise is having or showing experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Here's what I learned from, from looking at that meaning. I learned that we have different modes of learning. We learn from this definition of wise that possessing knowledge means you have the modes of experience and you have the modes of um, you know, good of learning from someone. So there's a teacher, there's also the experience piece of it. So either somebody helps you learn this or you learn from your own experience. How many other modes can there be as we learn? You know, we have the experience that allows us to discern things. You know, we can wonder, we can pontificate, we can, you know, learn something new by drawing from our past experience to help us learn this new thing, you know, especially when we encounter it for the first time. And that's effectively how we grow our knowledge for the most part. And in any of these modes of acquiring knowledge and consequently wisdom, which is drawn from these knowledge, we are limited by our understanding of the world around us. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have these limitations. He knows the most sublime things through the most sublime modes of learning. Allah possesses knowledge that is infinite and whose extinction is inconceivable by us. We know the look and sound of wisdom. We know this because when we hear it, we, we kind of have that feeling that, okay, this sounds like wisdom. When someone utters universal truth, for example, we immediately call it wisdom and we immediately call that person wise. So for example, uh, when we hear someone say, the beginning of wisdom is fear of God our ears will perk up immediately because it sounds like it's something that's coming from, from experience and from mining that knowledge to, to extract this nugget, you know, this one liner. Uh, and it sounds like a universal truth because it makes reference to God. And therein lies a share of humans in this attribute. That is our understanding of knowledge and wisdom is incomplete. If we do not understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, how can we claim to know or understand sublime knowledge or sublime wisdom without an understanding of he who is in possession of sublime knowledge. We know from our experiences in this world that to know what the best looks and feels like, we must experience it ourselves. How can we then claim to know that wisdom looks and feels like when we have no knowledge of the one from whom all wisdom comes? And this goes back to where I started about our purpose of learning about the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deeper we dive into learning about the master of the day of judgment, the more we should realize how we can grow and improve our character and grow our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah tells us, Allah grants wisdom to whoever he wills. And whoever is granted wisdom is certainly blessed with a great privilege, but none will be mindful of this except people of reason. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all wisdom. I mean, kulu kuli haza wa staghfirullahi wa lakum. Wa li sa'ir al-muslimin fa staghfiruhu innahu wa laqafuru rahim. I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you. 
and to the rest of the Muslims. So ask him for forgiveness. He is the forgiver, the merciful. Let us all pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides our hearts towards him. And may we all find the strength to stay firm on the path of Allah. And may Allah forgive our shortcomings, for he is oft forgiving and most merciful. O oh Allah, when we stray, please forgive us and do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us. Grant us your mercy. You are indeed the giver of all bounties. O oh Allah, bless us with pious spouses and offsprings who will be the joy of our hearts and make us models for the righteous. And please have mercy upon our parents and the believers on the day of judgment. Forgive our sins, absolve us of our misdeeds, and allow us each to die as one of the virtuous. And please guide the Muslim Ummah closer to you and protect us from those who lead us astray intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, Allah, please guard our health, the health of those who we love, and the health of those who endeavor to provide care and service to the members of our community. And O Allah, in you we trust, in you we always return, and to you is the final return. ربنا حب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عيونه وجعلنا من تكيننا إماما ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذرياتي ربنا وتقبل الدعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا عليك وتوكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المسير ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا اغفر لنا لنا ربنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنا كننا من الخاسرين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون آمين إن شاء الله may you all have a blessed Jum'ah and hope you all have a great weekend